What's up, people? Mr. Toolbox back with part two of the ambient audio series for Amazon's Lumberyard editor. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and click the annotation on screen now. You're going to need to create some assets with WYs that we're going to use here in our level. Now that everyone's caught up, I'm going to go ahead and create a new level for our audio tests. Just like in part one, I'm going to assume you're using the samples project. So if you've got work going on, Make sure you jump into the project switcher and jump into the samples project to follow along. There are two types of objects you can use in Lumberyard to create and control ambient audio. In the roll-up bar, you'll find them both under the audio button. We've got audio area ambiance and audio area entity. The difference is really in the, the breadth of the control you have. So audio area ambiance you can use for basic start and stop of ambient audio. The audio area entity you're going to control in flow graph. So it'll give you really fine grained control of when your stuff plays if you want to add some other flow graph nodes in there. For this video, however, we'll just look at the audio area ambiance so we can get the stuff wired up. I'll follow up with a video explicitly about audio area entity. Working with ambient audio at its most basic form only requires two objects. So I'm going to grab those and place them into the scene now. The first is going to be the audio area ambiance. So I'll click that. Over in the viewport, I will drop it into the level. The other thing we'll need is an area or shape to bind it to. So in the roll up bar and the area section, I'll go ahead and grab an area box. I'll drag that and drop it into the level as well. I'm careful to say bind there instead of link because there was a major gotcha in the documentation that I'll call out when we get to it. Before we start working with these objects, we need to take a quick detour into the audio controls editor. So up in the menu bar, click view, open view pane, and then select the audio controls editor. Well, it's not strictly necessary. The first thing I like to do here is just to create a folder for the things that I know I'm working with that weren't included by default. So if we right click out here, you can expand add and choose folder. I'll call this test trigger stuff. Press enter and I don't want it under default controls, so I will grab it and just drag it down to the bottom of this list. Now that we've got an empty home for our triggers, let's go ahead and add them in. Over here on the right hand side, you'll see WYS controls. This corresponds to the triggers that are in your WYS project. So in this list, let's look for the things that we created in part one, namely the play test trigger and stop test trigger. When you find those, just click on one. I've chosen play test trigger and then drag it into our folder. You'll see that it created a trigger this green icon denotes that it's a trigger and the connected control says play test trigger. Now let's select the stop test trigger and drag that into the same folder as well. The last one is one we didn't create but shipped with the project itself, but it's not tied to anything. If you come to the search bar and type AMB fade, you'll see that nothing shows up. Over here on the right hand side, you'll see that M fade is orange, which means it's not tied to anything. So let's grab a copy of that and drag that into our test trigger stuff as well. So we're done. So click file, save all. Then we can close the audio controls editor. This next bit is probably my paranoia more than anything, but given the trials and tribulations I had with the audio controls editor, one thing I like to do after I've made changes is up in the menu bar, click audio and click refresh audio. That'll rebuild the sound banks and refresh the audio system before we start using it. It's important to do that work in the audio controls editor before you start working with objects on your level, because if you haven't created those triggers in the left hand pane of the audio controls editor, you won't see them in the play trigger and stop trigger on your objects. With the housekeeping out of the way, we can start to use these objects so in my object selector, I'm going to choose the audio area ambiance, click select, and we'll see the properties and stuff change down here in the roll up bar. Let's go over those now. The params aren't particularly interesting, but just below them, we've got the audio area ambiance properties, and that's where we need to spend our time. 
There's three things here we need to take a look at. The first is the play trigger, the second is the RTPC, and then the third is the stop trigger. So let's click over to the right of play trigger and click the folder icon over on the right hand side. It'll bring up a little chooser. I'm going to expand my test trigger stuff folder and select play test trigger. We'll skip RTPC for the second and down in stop trigger we'll again click the folder, expand test trigger stuff, and select the stop test trigger. Those two properties essentially tell this audio area ambiance what to do for play trigger and stop trigger. It binds these triggers to the events we created in WYs, namely the play test trigger which plays our audio sample and the stop test trigger that stops the audio sample. Last but not least is the RTPC, real-time parameter control. So we will click the folder to the right of that. We'll expand test trigger stuff and grab that AM fade that we spoke about earlier. Click OK. That AM fade RTPC is responsible for determining how loudly to play our audio sample. And it's going to do that by sampling how far away the character is from the area in which that ambiance is supposed to play. That's it for the audio area ambiance, so let's switch over to our area box. I'll again select that in the object selector and then click select. There's a couple of properties here we'll want to tweak as well. I want to make this one fairly large, so let's say 40 for the width. We'll say 40 for the length. And the lumberyard documentation recommends you do at least 15 for the height so that you can catch a player while the player controller is jumping. I'll just set mine to 20. If you're like me and you read the docs on this audio area ambiance stuff, you'd think the next thing you need to do is link these two together. And I'll be honest, I did that for six hours. I went through this tutorial probably a dozen times trying to figure out why my audio wouldn't play. I gotta be careful not to rant because it was sort of infuriating, but in the end I found a solution that to me makes it seem like the, the documentation might be just plain wrong. And we're going to set this up right now. The docs will tell you that the next thing you need to do is open up the entity links section on your shape. Click pick target. Find your audio area ambiance and click pick. I did that a number of times and I could never get the audio to play. I got no indication as to why it wasn't working. Even with debugging cranked up, I couldn't see any audio events happening. So what I ended up doing instead is leaving the links alone, but attaching the entities instead down here near the bottom. So it's the same procedure. You just click pick, find your audio area ambiance, and click pick again. As soon as I did that, it worked, and it's maddening. I have a forum post up right now. If I get an answer on that, I'll go ahead and amend this video, but try it both ways, I guess. See which one works for you. If linking works, then follow the docs, but for me, I just could not get it to work. That's our audio area set up. Before we give it a test, I'm going to do something I tend to do in every video, and that's just paint the terrain underneath this sucker so we can see where the kind of sphere of influence should be for this audio area. I know it's kind of silly, but with checkerboard over the whole terrain, it might be useful. We are ready to rock with the obvious exception of having no player controller here. So let's go ahead and add one of those. I'm going to open up database view, jump into the prefabs library, click open, grab the character controllers.xml, expand that, grab sphere controller, drop them into the level. Close database view. Now, never once has the sphere controller been oriented the way I'd want it to, so let's make sure that we're facing the right direction when we start out here. Now we're ready to go. Let's cross our fingers and toes and give it a shot. I'm going to click in the viewport, press Ctrl G on the keyboard, and see what happens. out. 
and you'll see it stops. If I roll forward kind of slowly, see how it's kind of quiet now that I'm on the fringe of the audio area? If I move towards the center, it gets louder. That is beautiful. If it didn't work for you, don't panic. There's a couple things to check right off the bat. Now I've got extensive experience here with checking things uh, when your audio doesn't work, so take my word for this. Make sure that AI slash physics is enabled. Either click the button down here in the status bar or click game up on the top and make sure that enable physics slash AI is checked. The documentation was a bit vague that may only affect audio area entities and not audio area ambiance, but just to be safe, give that a tick. And then the other kind of more important one is just make sure you don't have mute audio selected. A couple things worth noting here. The placement of your audio area ambiance in your viewport really has no bearing on anything. You could shove it off into space if you want. The documentation suggests putting it in another layer. If you were building a real game with this stuff, I would suggest jamming all your audio stuff in one layer so that it's nice and consolidated. But you can put that anywhere you want, so just keep it out of the way. The other nice thing is that you can actually link an audio area ambiance to multiple area shapes. So I'm going to create another one, and we'll just roll in into both of them just so you can see it working. To do that, I'm going to pan the camera over to the right here. Click area in the roll up bar. And this time let's choose an area sphere. I'll drop that right about here. And I'll crank the radius up to 40 might be a bit big. Ooh, that's large. Let's do 20 instead. Perfect. Again, in Mr. Toolbox fashion, I will paint the ground underneath it a lovely shade of blue so we can see where this is going to play. This is about the extent of my art skills, by the way, so you are in select company having seen this. All right, we've got our shape. Perfect. The only thing left to do on the sphere is to attach the audio area ambiance. So down here in attached entities at the bottom of the roll up bar, we'll click pick. Select the audio area ambiance, click pick. All right, now we're in really uncharted waters, so let's give them both a go. Click on the viewport, press control G to start game mode, and let's, let's roll into the sphere first. I'm feeling lucky. Oh, that sweet box. I love the attenuation as you move in and out of the shape as the volume changes. And then back into the box. And it works here as well. That's really neat. Well, that's all I've got here for audio area ambiance. I know this is probably pretty simplistic for a lot of you, um, but in-game audio is not my bag in the least, so this was a learning experience for me. I'm hoping with these couple of videos that I can take some of that headache off of your shoulders and you can get to just creating these ambiances in your games. Because once I put them to use, even in this really simplistic view here, it's so satisfying to roll into an area and have ambient noise start playing, whether it be wind or city noise, whatever the case, just to have it wired up is the coolest thing. And audio cannot be overlooked when you're making a game. So hopefully you can put this to good use and I really cannot wait to see what you guys do with this. As always, comments, questions, concerns, feedback, drop it in the comments below. If you have any requests for follow-up videos, let me know below. Click like, maybe subscribe. I'm trying to put out videos as quickly as I can. If you've got any feedback, I'd love to hear it.